You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Podcast. Today I am going to be tackling a couple of questions from you little beauties, a couple of listener questions I'm going to be getting into in a bit more detail, ones that kind of really resonate with me, things that I've experienced myself and I feel like I've talked to a lot of people about. So I have some feedback for those individuals, but I think it's the kind of questions which we're all going to be that sit there and be like, yeah, me too, I feel like that sometimes. So hopefully I can give you some practical stuff to consider and ponder in your journey to uh, eradicating yourself of such stuff. Um, before I get on to that, if you're new to the Anxiety Podcast, where have you been all my life? I've been here forever, 263 episodes. Come on, mate, get on with it, go back to the start, let's go, catch us up. Um, anybody else do that? I always do that with podcasts, I can't help it. Um, if I find a podcast I like, I want to go back to episode one and start from there and then go through them all, and then I get halfway through and I'm like, God, there's way too many to catch up on. So here's my advice, actually, in that scenario. If you just found this recently... And then you're like, yeah, but I feel like in order to really cure myself of anxiety, I need to do a a diligent job and go back to the beginning and listen to all of them. Just in case Tim says one thing, one little morsel of information, that word, phrase or saying, which will fix me. Um, I don't think that exists, by the way. Some of the cumulative knowledge will help you change, but you really are the change yourself. You have to make the change. Um, But kind of what I do in those situations is I always stay current with the latest So I'll continue to listen to each episode as it comes out on a weekly basis. And then if you have extra time, go back to the archive and maybe just search things that resonate with you or scan some of the topics or interviewees or headings that speak to you and grab you and listen to those ones. But don't feel obliged to listen to all of them, of course, unless you just have to have uh, or unless you have a massive amount of time on your hands and you just want to listen to them all the time. In that case, download them to your heart's content. It's free, as you know. So just grab them all. Go for it. Tell all your friends. Um, anyway, if you are new, anxietypodcast.com, you can get the five-week course, which is uh, a video series, which more gems of knowledge in there. Uh, there's also the End Anxiety Toolkit, which is uh, an elaborate way to get you on my email list. But there is actually some good stuff in there. Um, if you sign up for that, you get a PDF, You get uh, access to uh, a voice thing that I recorded so you can listen to uh, some some, uh, stuff in times of need. And there's also in that little pack when you download it, there's also a a webinar type thing I did once which walks through, I think, some of the, the key reasons why people get anxious and how you can get out of it yourself. So anyway, again, if you're new, I've kind of gone through this arc in my life and I'm just taking you along for the ride. And so you'll see how things have evolved over time. And sometimes I give updates about what I'm doing and other times I'll answer questions and let's talk about you. So today we're talking about you. That's one of those ones. So I'm going to read a question out. Um, <clears throat> there's no name associated with these because I can't be bothered. Uh, or I'm not sure if people gave me permission or not. There's no name. I'm feeling kind of silly today, if you hadn't noticed. So get ready for it. This is the first question. Um, okay. So this question starts like this. But I have one question for you. In this uh, special and hard moment, I'm dealing with my anxiety. Um, when I totally understand everything, how it's working, how to overcome that, finally... I feel that I can embrace that feeling or at least have courage to try. But, so it sounds like that this individual feels like sometimes they feel like they're good. But when it comes to my work, I feel overwhelmed by my thoughts. You can't do that. For sure, something terrible will happen. What if all of my crew see my meltdown? What if I couldn't be able to be so far away from home? Anticipation of thoughts and feelings is super hard in my case. I'm doing things, I have to work, but everything is such a struggle. I can't make positive assumptions from making my steps. I'm thinking, okay, you've done that, but what if next time it'll be much worse? Um, feel like I, I feel like I can't learn a lesson from my small victories. I'm a slave of the mythical anxiety monster, which more or less doesn't exist. Could you give me some advice? It would be the world to me. Absolutely, my friend. Um, First of all, and I know a lot of you listening to this at home or on the bus or riding your bike or whatever you do, are nodding along and thinking, yeah, me too. 
the uh, mythical anxiety monster. It's not mythical because uh, it's there in our heads um, if we want to listen to it, right? So, um, but yeah, I think the the anticipation piece is, is hard. You know, the first thing I will say is that I think in those moments of when I've been there myself and I think you, I can't do that, something bad's going to happen, what if people see me, what if I can't get home, all of those thoughts, the first thing I would say is just like, stand in place and just like hang out there for a minute. I know some people use the technique of like just count to 15 or something. If you can count to 15, then you do 15 seconds. You can count to 15 again after that. But stand there for a minute. One of our old guests, uh, whose name escapes me now, taught us the the uh, the relaxation method, the mini meditation, where you inhale and say, I am, and you exhale and say, at peace. So just hanging out in the discomfort uh, is is a useful skill. Um, what happens when we retreat or retract every time we come across a little bit of adversity? Our brain remembers that. We're like, all right, first thing to do when anything gets difficult is run for it, right? So step one is just to hang out and say to yourself, like, you know, I've done this before. I can do it again. Um, and the thing that the thing that I've I kind of learned over the time is over the years is when I see things like that unfolding. Um, I'll stand there and hang out. And even then, when things like that aren't unfolding, I kind of look for opportunities to practice. So where would be an opportunity where I might normally get anxious? How could I put myself in that position again? Maybe it's next time I travel further away from home. Maybe it's next time um, I do something I've never done before, or I stretch myself a little bit and say, right, normally I can only do this activity for 10 minutes. I'm going to stay there for 20 minutes. Or normally when I go to the movie theater, I sit on the end of the row in case I need to, I'm going to, this time I'm feeling good. I'm going to sit in the middle. I'm going to sit at the front of the class. I'm going to put my hand up first in the meeting. I'm going to go first and, and take my most confident self, confident self and put it out there in front of people. Right? So look for opportunities to practice. It's like everything. It's all stems from the same stuff. The anxiety monster in our brain is alive and well because we feed him we feed him fear cookies all the time. I just made that up. I kind of like it. The cookie monster eats fear cookies. We feed him fear cookies, which is like we play into that. We're like, well, maybe you're right. Maybe I am going to fuck it up this time, right? Maybe this is the time when I have the the proper meltdown to end all meltdowns, right? Well, yeah, that's cool. But also, you know, we're not going to live forever either. So that type of thinking just isn't useful. And we have to counter that with say, but what if what if this is the time that things go amazingly well? What if this is the time when I do something which is to people are just like, wow, that was awesome. Incidentally, side note, I played my last hockey game of the season on Sunday night, ice hockey, uh, and I scored a hat trick. Scored a hat trick. And I kind of like what happens when you get in that I'm a defenseman, so it's unlikely. Um, but after I scored the first goal, I kind of thought in my head, I was like, that was surprisingly easy. I could do that again, right? A little bit of confidence. So I tried another move and scored a second goal. After the second goal, I was like, I could probably score as many goals as I want now, but it'd be nice to get the third because of the the old hat-trick thing. So I tried a bit harder. The hat-trick happened. I was putting myself in the position to be successful because after I scored the first goal, because I took the opportunity, I knew the other ones could come. And I think the same is true in all this stuff, you know, so I know it's hard, like I, I'm not ever going to uh, underestimate the amount of how you feel your struggle is for you specifically as an individual, because I hear you. And when I was there myself, I, I would have been like, yeah, Tim, but it's different for me. No, it isn't. It's fucking hard for everybody. It's super hard when everything inside you is telling you to run and I'm telling you to just stand there and hang out for a minute. And then next time I hang out for a, a minute longer. We have to lean into this. We have to try a bit harder, right? Look for opportunities to practice. Volunteer. How can I help? How could I do a bit more? How can I do a bit more of that thing that makes me feel uncomfortable? That, you know, that was speaking for me and now I do that all the time. And once in a while I get a little flush of like the old anxiety feeling. But it goes away as quickly as it comes now because I'm just like, I practice a lot. I practice all the time. 
So go further than you need to. Do a little bit more than you need to. Do the extra rep. It's kind of like, um, <clears throat> I listened to this amazing podcast the other day on the Joe Rogan show with a guy called David Goggins. I'll talk about this more in another time. I know I said that before, but I will get around to it. But the amount of like, f- you know, physical endurance this guy's been through, I listened to that podcast. And then the next day I was in the gym and I was like, I could do one more rep than I did last time. And I ended up doing five more. So it's within us. Like that mental game is real. If you believe you can do it, you can. Um, I used to train with a good friend of mine, Jason. Um, He probably won't be listening to this, almost guaranteed. But when I was a kid, when I was 16, 17, I trained with my friend Jason in England. And um, we used to do this thing for grip strength where we would hang on a bar, just hang on a bar. And we would time ourselves each week and see if we could hang on a little bit longer. Um, so you start off and you can do 30 seconds and 40 seconds and your forearms are burning like crazy. And then you stay on an extra 10 seconds. But as time goes on, um, we got better and better. And, and his thing he would say to me, or I would say to myself would always be like, when you think you're about to fall off the bar, then just think I'm just going to do 10 seconds more. You're in the pain. Your forearms are burning lactic acid like crazy. And then you're just like 10 seconds more. And every time you add that, you're incrementally building that muscle. You're building that strength. The same thing happens with our brains. We've been here before. I've done this before. Throw me in a cold shower now, I'll, I'll laugh at you. Brilliant. Love it. Because I've done it a hundred times, right? First time you put somebody in there, they're like, oh my God, that is so uncomfortable. Get me out immediately. They'll scream and run off, right? So it's the same stuff. We need to build resilience. We need to build resilience. And, you know, Anxiety is a complicated old beast and there's a lot of um, reasons why people are anxious. For some people it might be trauma or abuse. For some people it might be uh, an accident they were involved in. For some people it might be confidence or stuff from your parents or stuff from work or stuff from school all over the place, right? But one thing I believe is true is that once we get to the root of that story and understand the origin, building resilience is relevant to all of us. We can all get stronger, right? Right? So process it and then let it go. We go back to like the fundamentals of overcoming anxiety. You can't go around it. You can't avoid it. You can't throw a blanket on it and forget about it. You have to go through it. You have to almost like a a ghost. Maybe isn't a good analogy if people are afraid of ghosts. Whatever, we'll go with it. But it's just going to pass through you and out the other side. It doesn't stay with you forever, right? The other part of this this message that I got, this email I got, it just seems like you're trying to hold your shit together so tightly that you're trying to appear like everything's fine. You're the swan on the lake where underneath the water, you're, you're, uh, what are they called? What's the feet of a swan called? Paddles or something? I can't even think. Your webbed feet are like flipping away and on the top, you're graceful and smooth and everything's looking beautiful. That's not the truth. Show some people some vulnerability. And I don't mean like, do a Facebook live and, you know, dump it all out online, but share some bits of you, your story with people you trust on a regular basis. Get it out there. Find friends you can talk to. Let's not attempt to be 10 foot tall and bulletproof, right? Let's attempt to be a real human because you know other people out there are going through similar stuff. The, the other part of it, um, I thought this is going to be a quick answer. It is not the case for me. I, apparently, I love to talk. You guys know me by now. If it gets worse, you'll still be okay. You can handle it right? You can always handle the stuff that comes at you. You have a 100% record of handling it so far. Sometimes it's been shit. As you know, I've had my own personal experiences with difficult times around anxiety, but, you know, they shape me to be a better person, right? Which I can say now because I'm on the other side to some extent. Um, But you can handle it. You're capable of this. It won't define you forever, you have to you have to believe that and know that you can handle the bad times. And for really for me, um, I don't know if I've said this before, but th- that first anxiety attack I ever had, serious one, if you go back to episode one when I talk about it, that's the worst it ever was. That's the worst it ever was because it surprised the absolute shit out of me. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know what it was. I didn't have a name for it. I thought I was broken. I thought there was something wrong with me. I thought I was terminally ill and dying there on the spot swallow me up a hole in the ground right after that I was like well this is difficult and extremely uncomfortable and debilitating and life-changing and all the rest of it but I knew what it was to some extent so I was like well at least I know what I'm dealing with and if you've come to this because you searched anxiety on google or in itunes then 
That's what we're talking about, which is good. We know what it is. It's not a, it's not a total surprise or a bolt out of the blue. So it's not going to get worse. Um, and last but not least, I go back to my other point, which is like all of the people we're around at work all the time, and I, I get more of this because I am vulnerable and people do tell me stuff. Everybody's struggling with stuff. Don't think it's just you who's having a bad day. We all have bad days from time to time. So don't be like, I have to be impervious and perfect because everybody else is. No, they're not. Don't believe the bullshit pictures on Instagram. There's just as much bad behind them as there is good in front of them. So take it easy. That was question one. What do you guys think? Pretty quick, right? <laughs> that was the first question. Here is the second question, which is kind of similar, which I grouped these two together for this episode because I thought you you guys are going to, uh, they just, they synchronize kind of thing. Uh, here's a question for you, Tim. Do you ever find yourself stressing out over something that can't possibly happen? For example, you're watching a movie about uh, someone skiing. Even though you've never skied before and don't have the desire to ever do so, you suddenly think, what if I'm skiing and I hit a tree and got paralyzed? As soon as the thought forms, you feel your heart rate increase, tingling in your belly. Um, basically, all the signs of anxiety. You quickly start to tell yourself to chill out, that that will never happen, and it's not worth getting worked up about. But sometimes the loop starts and it takes you a while to stop. It's just, uh, I know how you say lean into it, I just did, uh, but I think there is really no fear because there's no possibility that will ever happen, right? It's just anxiety rearing its ugly head. What are your thoughts on this? Um, I try to explain it to people who don't understand this way. Do you know the feeling when you're on top of a very high building and you look down, you suddenly get a rush and tingling all over your body, your heart rate and breath increase? Well, that is what anxiety is like but it can happen randomly all throughout the day. Is this accurate Accurate for you as well? We'd love to hear your thoughts, all the best. So, um, yes, I think that is a good... You know, I've told stories before of how I used to be watching uh, TV with my kids on a Saturday morning in my house, perfectly safe, no impending doom, and all of a sudden I just start to have a... Uh, start to feel anxious, right? The that kind of warm feeling engulfing your body or a bit of sweat or a bit of a heart race and then you feel like your face is flushing and you're like, what the, why is this happening now? It's inopportune. Um, so first of all, for all you lovely people, that's very common. Anxiety by design is uh, unexpected and unfounded fear and it crops up because you have this very small gap in um in your thoughts when you think, well, <laughs> and sometimes we do it to ourselves. We're like, well, it'd be weird if I felt anxious now. And then you do. <laughs> so we kind of brought that on ourselves, right? Because you know how to, if you're if you're a professional uh, at triggering unnecessary feelings, then of course you can make yourself anxious as well, right? Start thinking about something weird and then all of a sudden you feel anxious. So a lot of anxiety is fretting about lots of things that won't ever happen. Very, very common. You're not into skiing. What if I hit a tree and got paralyzed? And then you feel anxious because some part of you is going there, right? Some part of you is going, you've, you've put your mind into the situation where you've created an illusion of danger, right? You've created an illusion of danger within your mind. And then your mind doesn't always know the difference between reality and stuff you make up so it's like god that would be awful wouldn't it if i couldn't and then anxiety appears because it's trying to protect you your brain's just trying to protect you and say stay away from that shit don't even think about going skiing because you might hit a tree and get paralyzed so it makes you feel that way so although you might think that's like crazy i think that's pretty logical because you're triggering a pattern um i used to think about stuff like what if i sent an email to somebody and it was you know, and I said something really wrong and then I would feel anxious just thinking about sending an email to somebody I wasn't even going to send an email about out to, right? So it's the same kind of thing. Um, or what if uh, I said something to somebody and really upset them and then that would make me anxious and, 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 and all the rest of it. So I would say, um, and that feeling that you get on top of a very high building, you know, is is that is real anxiety because you know, your brain, your logical part of your mind, brain might say, well, there's a big fence in front of me, so I can't possibly fall off. But the the crock part of your brain is like, fuck off, mate. I'm not going near the edge because we're like five stories up in the sky and I would die if that fence wasn't there. So there's that like a division of the protection part and then the practical part and they don't always get it right. Um, so anyway, 
back to your question, um, this is, you know, classically called intrusive thoughts, right? Classically called intrusive thoughts. You come up with something in your head, which is absolutely ridiculous. You know, there's no chance of it ever happening, yet you still get anxious about it. Very common. So I think, you know, the trick to these is to, is to realize that first of all, they'll pass. Um, I used to have intrusive thoughts a lot. Even the word intrusive thoughts sounds a bit dodgy. It sounds kind of harsh. Um, but they pass and they go away again. And so I think if you just always go into that engagement with with knowing that if I like just l- let this be, then it's going to dissipate over time. The big mistake is when people try to try to instantly get it out of their mind and say, don't think about that. That's awful. Oh my God, don't even think about, you know, paralyzing yourself skiing or don't even think about, you know, um, doing something bad or whatever the intrusive thought is or embarrassing yourself. Don't even think about that. I wouldn't like go to the extent of being too driven around um, getting rid of it. Just say like, this is irrational. It's kind of my mind taking the piss and pushing my buttons to see if I'm going to respond. And so now I have a choice. I can either follow it down the rabbit hole and try and flush it out of my system and shame myself into thinking that that isn't something I'm possibly capable of, or I can just like kind of let it be. So with all these things and a good you know, I always walk towards them, not away from them. And it's the same thing I said about the previous question. You're you're triggering a pattern, just sit there and say, right, this is what's going on. I've triggered the pattern. I'm going to feel this anxiety for a minute or two, and then uh, it'll go away again because it's unfounded. And back to my conversation of alignment in your life, what's the origin of the anxiety? Why do you feel the way you do? Is it your relationship or your job or the food you eat or the place you live or the stories that you've been told, whatever that stuff is, as you begin to fix the underlying issue, these intrusive thoughts get less and less. And these anticipatory thoughts get less and less. They are signals and they are kind of markers of the underlying stuff that you're dealing with. So if you find yourself having a lot of them, it's probably because you have a lot of anxiety because you have a lot of stuff that you haven't worked through yet. Okay. Um, I would also say like, you know, on that side of things, if you're looking for solutions around why these things are coming up, look outside of the box, look at what else is going on in your life. You know, anxiety is a symptom of something else. It's not, it's not all encompassing in and of itself. So, um, you know, if you're, it's kind of like somebody says, I can't sleep at night. And then they say, but I drink coffee in the evening. I'm like, hang on a minute. It's not about, this isn't about insomnia. You don't need like better sleep hygiene. You need to stop drinking coffee, mate. That's, there we go. And sometimes we, we think that it's not the uncomfortable situation we have in a relationship that makes us anxious. And we say, well, there's two separate things. Anxiety is just anxiety, but no, it's part of us. It's the, it's the, it's, it's right at our core. It's our heart. It's love. It's, it's right in the middle of all of those things is self-esteem, it's self-belief, it's how we feel about how we engage with the world, right? Getting really soppy now, folks. But I believe this stuff. And as I've said before, I think those of us who've suffered with anxiety and suffer from anxiety, it's because we're sensitive people. It happened to me today. I was walking down the road at lunchtime and there was a homeless person crying on the side of the road, just crying their eyes out. And instantly I felt that kind of flush go through me. And I just, you know, I can't help but feel that shit. I can't help it. And so, anyway, now I'm getting emotional talking about it. But uh, look outside the box. Anxiety, I do believe, is sending you a message. I do believe it's about alignment. Um, And so build a body of work around becoming the best version of you. Build a practice around how do I... We can't, let's say we can't fix the anxiety today, but what else could I do to make myself feel better if I couldn't fix that? If I don't have the magic tools to fix that what else could i do does walking help does drinking water help does some meditation help does exercise help does coloring help does journaling help does talking to nice people help right does having hard conversations with people help that have been lingering over my head for a while all of these things help one of them or a combination of them will be the solution to your problem because it is for everybody who gets better. It's for everybody who feels better. They make their own recipe of what is important in their life to change. 
and I want the same for you. That's what I'm here for. That's why we're talking about this stuff. Anyway, I feel good today. That was a good podcast. Um, hopefully, <laughs> you feel the same. The profanity might have been on a bit more than usual, but um, that's just the kind of mood I'm in. So, fuck it. Oops. There's another one. Sorry. Um, I know some people love it when I swear and some people hate it. So I'll, I'll, I'll try and tone it down a bit next time and give you some balance. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did enjoy it enough to give me a five-star review, then please go to Apple Podcasts or formerly known as iTunes or wherever you consume this noise and uh, this beautiful noise and leave a review for me. I would appreciate it. If you have any questions you want me to talk about on the show, go to anxietypodcast.com, click on the contact page and send me a message say hi. If you want to support the show, you can donate, you can buy yourself an anxiety journal, um, but also just the ratings also help, apparently, as well. Get it out to more people. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.